Hello, beautiful creatures. I hope you guys are having an amazing day so far. I know I sure am because I'm really excited to make this video. Yay. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, my name is Kai and I'm here to talk about dolls and get nostalgic and stuff. And I'm really excited for today's video, especially because I've been working on the script for a while. Um, if you're not new to the channel, if you've been here, you know I usually do unscripted like unboxings and stuff like that. So this will be a little bit different. Hopefully you guys still like it. Hopefully. Uh, in case you haven't read the title, today I'm going to be talking about the entire history of the girls with a passion for fashion. The one and only Bratz. I love it. I wore my favorite hoodie just for this or my favorite sweater just for this. And I'm so excited. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, like I said before, I have worked really hard on this script, so I really hope you guys like it. And if you do, let me know. Just leave a little like just to please the algorithm. Please, thank you so much, just because I worked really hard on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's just, let's get into the whole video. I will be separating this video into sections just so it's easier to digest. And in case you see me looking down, it's just because I do have my script. I could not remember all of this stuff without my script, so... If you see me looking down that's all it is let's get started with chapter one the creator and his creation so carter bryant was the one to conceptualize and create the stylish sassy doll line we all love the little story starts in 1995 when bryant was hired by none other than mattel as a designer for barbie Bryant quickly became bored of the traditional Barbie aesthetic he was required to create for Mattel and eventually left the company to return home to Missouri with his family and did freelance work, including pieces for like an Ashton Drake gallery, which is pretty cool. Ashton Drake and Barbie are pretty cool things to have on your resume. It was during this time that Bryant spent at home that he drove past Kickapoo High School in Missouri and saw a group of fashionable bratty teenage girls that sparked the idea for a fashion doll that was refreshingly different from the rest that were on the market. He wanted this doll line to be edgier, cooler, and a whole lot more diverse than what we had on the time. From the beginning, the designs of the girls were meant to be really ambiguous to allow for as many kids as possible to see themselves in the dolls. He did not want to give a specific ethnicity to his dolls. He wanted the people playing with them to put that on the dolls themselves. Although the level that they introduced with isn't great by today's standards, for 1999, it was pretty impressive. It was pretty impressive. Brian continued to work on the designs in his spare time, but after working at Old Navy, apparently, rough, <laughs> to make ends meet, he decided to return to Mattel. This time he worked on collector Barbies aimed at the adult collectors, including one of my favorite Barbie dolls of all time, the Grand Entrance doll, which is absolutely gorgeous it also goes for like surprisingly little on ebay so definitely one of my new isos because she's gorgeous i love her i love her so much plus the box even says designed by carter bryant and i love that i love carter bryant carter chose not to take his designs to mattel because he knew they were not very receptive to unique ideas that were separate from the barbie brand but he did eventually pitch it to mga C CEO Isaac Larian and <laughs> Isaac Larian there's a lot you could say about Isaac Larian but <laughs> that could honestly be its own video Isaac Larian didn't originally really like the idea he said that he thought they looked like aliens <laughs> with their big heads but his daughter Jasmine was there and she loved the idea and convinced him to back it I'm gonna read a quote from You Don't Owe Me by Orly Lobel um, that is directly from Jasmine. There was nothing diverse on the market at that time. A designer, Bryant, came to see my dad with some drawings of Bratz dolls. I was in the meeting and I was obsessed with them. My dad thought they looked like aliens. He was like, why do they have such big heads and feet that come off? But I was like, these are cool. I need these. And so that's it. He made them. <laughs> so thank you, Jasmine. Without you, we would not have the Bratz. <laughs> Bryant gave his designs and some other inspirational material that we will come back to, to MGA's design team to bring the idea to life. Before we get to the dolls and get to how we got them, I'm gonna go back and we're gonna talk a little bit about the concept and the original designs. And I'm gonna start this with a quote from the book as well. 
Carter, energized by his serendipitous encounter with the bubbly high school kids of Kickapoo, this is extremely dramatic, by the way, I feel like I need to do a dramatic reading, came home and began feverishly sketching a group of girlfriends. He gave them personalities. They were popular and hip, but neither fancy or stuck up. They had attitude and self-confidence. They were fearless and strong. Carter drew their hands on their hips to convey just a little bit of defiance. As he jotted down to himself, he drew a Hispanic girl and named her Lupe. Next came to life an African-American girl named Halliday. And Carter scribbled after her name, plays drums and spins the turntable, speaks French acting and political science. Jade was Carter's Asian girl who he sketched skinnier than her friends. She had attitude, but was also fun and kooky. Carter dreamed of Jade playing bass and studying classical violin and child psychology. Zoe, the leader of the pack, was a bit sweeter and softer. The magic in Carter's creation was that he made the girls edgy and smart. When he sketched the angels, he was in the zone. Carter sketched the foundation of his universe, and in the end, he wrote, Meet the brats. They are the cool girls from your school. I like that. <laughs> I really like that. Bryant's original designs were a little different from the pro uh, final product that we got. They were initially supposed to come with short hair and then a wig that you could put on top to have another like makeover aspect of the dolls. Sorry, my cat's like biting things next to me. <laughs> to have another makeup uh, makeover aspect. I, I'm kind of glad that didn't happen, but we'll get back to that. Each girl also, even in the concepts, had their own tagline and unique personality. That was very important right from the beginning. So let's go over the concepts. First, we have Halliday, who obviously became Sasha. Her, oops, my cat is freaking out. Okay, my cat's got the zoomies. Meet Halliday. She's got the best ultra trendy streetwear and braids for hitting the books. I kind of wish she actually had braids in her final look. Jean skirt, boots, and knit cap, not to mention a funky backpack. Check out the logo. Give Halliday a look that is all that. On date night, it's a sassy short dress, platforms, and a totally new do. But again, I, I love, 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 love her braids. But I feel like these original concepts, especially the first one and all the date night outfit, she's so light-skinned. Like, I'm really glad they changed that a little bit because for the only black character to be that light-skinned would be not great considering they were all about diversity. So I'm glad they changed that a bit. Next we have Lupe, who was the original Yasmin, who I'm just gonna point out really quick, her skin is also a lot lighter. Um, she also has like red hair in one of them, which I think is really cute. And her designs say, she's the princess of pretty in her casual wear of tank top and wide leg khakis. Cute sweatshirt, silvery, Silvery tennies, a fun red updo, and French, fresh backpack give her a great look for school. So I love the red hair. I kind of wish she had the red hair. It's so cute. And then she's got her second outfit. For party time, change her into a short skirt, braids, and silver stompers. Love that. Next we have Zoe, who is obviously the original Chloe. And in her first outfit, she says, she's the queen of cool at school with her short, dark brown hair and funky stompin' sneaks. Hip hugger jeans, short t-shirt, and glittery vinyl backpack complete her daytime look. And she's got really short black hair, which I kind of love. We don't see a lot of dolls with short hair. And then she's got her party look, which you can tell looks a lot more like the actual Chloe that we got at the end. And it says, now she has a whole new look for nighttime fun with the rest of the Bratz gang. And yeah, she looks a lot more like Chloe there. And last of all, we have Jade, who was always Jade. That's her name from the beginning. First of all, I love her cute little spiky hair. It is adorable. Jade loves far out fashion. Mary Jane's and a baby doll are just perfect for study hall. Twisty hairdo, fringy jacket, and a sweeter than sweet backpack. And Jade is ready for serious high school rock. I love it. I love the hair so much. So much. And then we have her, she looks more like final concept with her wig on as well. For weekend nights, hang with the brats. It's a sweet dragon logo tee with a roughly skirt and those boots. She's as cool as can be. Those are the original concept designs. Overall, the art's really cute, but they did change a few things for the better, I think. Um, I don't know, like the wigs are a really cool idea, but they tend to look bulky when you do wigs on dolls. It doesn't usually look very good in my opinion so I think it's for the best plus 
I can't imagine they were a huge fan of the short hairstyles. Usually, I don't know, I feel like they don't really like short hairstyles on dolls. We should see them more often, but I do suppose that kind of gets rid of the hair play aspect, so I don't know. I don't know. Tell me how you feel about it. So that's the story of how the brats were created to begin with. The first sculpts were created and the girls with a passion for fashion were born. In May of 2001, Bratz hit the shelves with their debut line, Cool Bratz, featuring the four core girlies, Sasha, Jade, Chloe, and Yasmin. There they are, in their, in their glory. Each doll had thick hair, exaggerated proportions, and an edgy look. They came with two outfits, two pairs of shoes that were, their whole legs were, whole feet were removable, as I'm sure you guys remember, a hair accessory, accessory a Bratz pack, and a comb. Everything was pretty standard, no wigs, obviously. Their outfits were cool and trendy, and unlike other doll lines at the time, they had very distinct characters. That's my favorite thing about Bratz. They had very distinct personalities. They all had their own style, they all had their own attitude, and it was portrayed by just a line or two of text on the box. Uh, I will tell you what they are really quick. Just for the four core girls, I'm not gonna say the line for every single character we had. We would be here all freaking day. Jade says, hey, my name is Jade. My fashion passion is clothes that are extreme and far out. My friends call me cool cat because I love cats and I'm cool, which same. Yasmin says, hey, my name is Yasmin. My fashion passion is bohemian clothes in earth tones and awesome textures. My friends call me pretty princess because I rule. And then Sasha, hi, my name is Sasha and my fashion passion is urban streetwear like beanies and jean skirts. My friends call me bunny boo because I love that hip hop thing. And then the last one, Chloe's. My name is Chloe and I rock. My fashion passion is exotic animal prints and sparkly fabrics. My friends call me Angel because that's what I am. I do like that Chloe gets the, my name is Chloe and I rock. And the rest of them are just like, hey, my name is. <laughs> I think that's funny. Uh, tell me in the comments which one of the four girls was your original favorite because mine was Jade. I was always really drawn to her, probably because she was a little bit more alternative than the rest. And as you can see, I'm a little bit alternative. But I really loved all of them, especially once the show started airing and I watched it. I loved all the characters. I was really into the, the brats in general. Initially, this line was a little bit of a financial letdown until the holiday season of 2001. And suddenly the brats were flying off the shelves. After the holiday success, 2002 brought a lot of new and exciting brats products. This year we got Beach Party, Flaunt It, Funkin' Glow, which introduced Megan, Express It, and the Stylin' Salon and spa, with, spa, which introduced, oh my God, Dana. I loved Dana too, she's really cute. The first Bratz boys were introduced in 2002, which were Dylan and Cameron, and their slogan was, the boys with a passion for fashion and the Bratz, which I love. <laughs> I love. I also love that there's two of them and four of the Bratz, because then it just implies that they're sharing. Along with the dolls, there were plushies, fashion packs, party supplies, makeup, apparel, video games, and a whole lot more hidden shelves. The girls with a passion for fashion were taking over. For the first time in toy history, Barbie actually had competition. Just a note, by the way, I'm not going to be adding every single doll line from here on out because we would be here literally all day if I did. So if you want to look at everything, please, please go check out Look and Bratz, the website. They have literally every doll line. You can look through their entire database and see every single doll line and every single doll within it. And it's amazing. It's so much fun. Please just go do that. That website is amazing. I don't know who runs it, but they have put so much hard work into it and it is wonderful. So please, if you want to look at actually every single line, go on to Look and Bratz. I'll put a link in the description as well. Okay, let's move on. 2003 to 2004, Megan moves out of town and Fiona and Nevra take her place. Nevra appears in Formal Funk, which is such a cute line, and Fiona debuts in another Silence of the Lawn and Spa. The first Bratz twins are released. Does anybody else remember the twins? I loved the twins. I don't know. I've always had like a weird obsession with twins and anything, so I loved the Bratz twins. Roxy and Phoebe were the first ones, which keep Roxy in mind because I love Roxy. Um, and then after moving out of town very briefly, Megan actually came back in Wildlife Safari. 
They released cars, motorcycle furniture this year. And the ever controversial Bratz babies and Bratz pets. They're a little silly looking, but I like them personally. I have a baby Chloe somewhere that I thrifted. I wish I had her right now, but I like them. I don't know. <laughs> They're silly. I do think the Bratz pets are funnier because, I don't know, like cats with like, human eyes and human mouths are like creepy to me so they're a little unsettling like they're uncanny that's what it is the first Bratz movie released and it was titled Bratz the video starring and styling you can find it on YouTube for free it's cute but not nearly as good as the later stuff and I feel like they're really mean to Jade in it for no reason my fave um and then let's move on 2005 to 2006 the girls formed their first rock band, Space Angels. This line's so cute. I love it so much. Uh, a lot more characters were introduced. Some popular ones. Felicia in Campfire. If you guys know anything about the secondhand market, you know about Campfire Felicia. Oh my god. Next we have Katya, who came out as the Bratz Holiday doll. She's so pretty. Kumi in Ooh La La, who is my favorite um, non-core character. I love Kumi. We got two new twins packs, Nona and Tess and Valentina and Oriana. Very cute. And then we got Kiana in Wild Wild West, who is also very cute. Next, we're moving on to 2005, a very exciting year. This is the year I got into the Bratz because they had their first full-blown multimedia campaign. They had Bratz Rock Angels. The iconic line included a movie, which is amazing, an album, which is amazing, a video game, and a whole lot more. Such an iconic line. I know a lot of people are not really into the, the reproductions that came out of these, but I really like them just because I love having the opportunity to see these in stores again. Not that I ever see Bratz dolls in the store where I live, but that's a moot point right now. <laughs> I honestly... Would love to do a video that's just about the Bratz Rock Angels movie or maybe just about the TV series in general because it's so iconic. It's so iconic. It's so iconic. <sighs> Bratz Rock Angels also served as the first three episodes of the TV series, so it could be watched as a movie or as three individual episodes. A few more notable lines from this year is Pretty and Punk. Everybody knows Pretty and Punk. I have my reproduction pretty and punk jade right here with me um midnight dance which i would kill for the midnight dance dolls these dolls are so pretty uh treasures which was pirate themed i also love this one it's so 2000 early 2000s emo is what it is i love it and of course welcome to fabulous everybody knows welcome to fabulous um, this year we got itsy bitsy brats and brats kids as well as brats kids or brats babies ponies Everything with it is it. 2006, we got new movies. Genie Magic and Forever Diamonds, along with their doll lines. Both iconic. Love those. Bratz Babies starred in their first movie, uh, which was just Bratz Babies, the movie. Lil, Br Lil Bratz released their last line. Some more iconic lines from this, from this year. Ice Champions, the Princess line, and the new twins, Leela and Krista. Not a whole lot of exciting stuff happening in 2006. Next, we're gonna be getting into the first downfall of the Bratz. In 2007, the, the ever iconic Bratz Fashion Pixies was released. Personal favorite of mine, the dolls and the movie, despite the kind of weird face molds that a lot of people are not a fan of. The Bratz also started their own live action film this year, the live action Bratz movie. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. I've never seen the live action Bratz movie. Maybe I'll watch it if I do a video about it, but I like the cartoon too much and I feel like I'm like loyal to the cartoon version. So Good from Bratz Rock Angels was nominated for an Emmy because of fucking course it was, and it was robbed. It did not win, it was robbed. Bratz came out with the Bratz Little Angels. I think these are so cute for no reason. They kind of remind me of um, the little like cutie, cutie babies, but like, Bratz versions. I think they're really cute. <laughs> Bratz Kids Sleepover and Bratz Super Babies were both released. I'm not even going to talk about Bratz Super Babies. <laughs> Pampered Pups came out this year and the Spider-Man 3 Chloe, which is such an iconic doll. 
Uh, around this time, the Bratz were starting to receive a lot of criticism from their fans for lacking innovation and becoming less unique, which was kind of their thing. It's why they were so popular. So taking a look back at these releases, I think you can see why too. You know, they're not, they're not up to the same standard as they used to be. So in 2008, the Bratz went, underwent a bit of rebranding to combat the criticisms from Fran, fans and brought out the designed by line, coming back with more fashion forward designs like they used to have. This line is really pretty. It's really beautiful. I love it. Bratz girls really rock. Bratz kids fairy tales and Bratz babies save Christmas come out. I can't, I just don't think I have the mental capacity right now to talk about the Bratz babies movies. They're so cursed. Again, maybe, like, I would really like to do an entire separate video just about the Bratz media, the TV shows and the movies. So maybe I'll have to watch, suffer through all of the Bratz Babies movies, but they're cursed. Like, they are unhinged. I, woof. <laughs> um, the Lil Bratz and the Bratz Babies, including Big Babies, get a reboot this year. And then on December 8th, 2008, MGA was ordered by a judge to recall all Bratz products and destroy all materials related to creating the dolls in their lawsuit against Mattel. Yikes. So we're going to take a brief break really quick to talk about all of the legal issues that I have conveniently ignored until now. As you probably guessed, Mattel was not exactly happy about one of their own employees selling ideas to their main competitor. So in 2004, they filed a complaint against Carter Bryant, citing his failure to disclose concept sketches as a breach of his contract because he never even offered to show Mattel his brats. He kept it to himself until giving them to MGA. Carter filed a countersuit uh, against, or sorry, a counter complaint, and MGA chose to intervene in the lawsuit against their now employee. And they also, oh my God, this is such a mess, filed an independent complaint against Mattel because Mattel designed its Mycene dolls to evoke the look of the brats and encroached on their distinctive packaging. What a mess, you guys, oh my God. But anyways, in 2008, the court ruled in Mattel's favor and ordered them $100 million in damages, as well as forcing MGA to remove Bratz from the shelves. Did they do that? No, they did not. They did not remove Bratz from the shelves. This was not actually the only legal battle that the Bratz would find themselves in, though. In 2011, Steve Madden photographer Butch Blair attempted to sue MGA for copying his style, but the judge ended up throwing out the case despite the admission that Blair's images were inspirational material because you can't copyright an idea, even if the idea is grotesquely disproportionate images of young women. Want to hear more specifically about the court cases between MGA and Mattel? I will be linking a video by um, Bratz Party Pack that's really great. And then there's also one called the History of the Mattel Bratz by Forever Bratz that I am going to be linking as well. Both of those are really awesome and they will give you a lot more context as in as to the legal battle that they went through and more of the copyright stuff because that's not really what I'm focusing on in this video. Okay, cool. Make sure you support these YouTubers as well. They're small YouTuber, YouTubers, bigger than me, but still small YouTubers. So please go support their channels because I think they have great content. Back to the video. Anyways. Let's go back to the dolls. Despite the orders to cease production, the girls with a passion for fashion lived on and MGA continued pr to produce dolls throughout 2009. They continued focusing on their fashion but received many complaints about the piss poor hair quality. Like, I'm sorry, but it was really, it was really, really bad. People hated it. People were really mad. Bratz Little Angels and Bratz Kids were both rebranded to Forever, so there was the Forever Friends line. And Bratz released a few more lines before disappearing. Before we can talk about the eventual comeback of the Bratz, we do need to talk about the controversy. Really quickly, as you can see, the lighting in here is deteriorating. I have the worst setup for lighting. This is the only place I can have these dolls. Uh, and I wanna film with them in the background, but it's really hard. Say hello to my kitty. This is Dahlia. She's here to join us. It's honestly really, really difficult to research the brats without coming across some kind of really weird, like slut shamey comments about them from comments from parents like 
Bratz is the second worst doll for girls. Barbie is number one, no doubt. They teach girls fashion. Bratz are slutty and wear too much makeup. And Bratz dolls promote sexual exploitation and prostitution. Look how they dress. Girls shouldn't have to grow up too fast. They're better off with Rainbow Bright. She's a very decent cartoon from the 1980s. <laughs> And articles like Bratz the Movie Debate, Harmless or Harlots by NBC News. Can you believe these are genuine articles? <laughs> like genuine, like real adults wrote these things about children's dolls. It's pretty clear that not everybody was on board with the Bratz like we were. <laughs> Par some parents saw their almond eyes, big lips and curvier figures and immediately associated them with very adult themes. I'm really hoping now in 2023, all of us here can agree that these adults were the weird ones that were putting their sexuality onto the dolls and not the doll makers and people want to play with the dolls, right? We can all agree on this, right? Okay, good. Another thing that a lot of critics fail to realize is that the features they were criticizing these dolls for having and calling inherently sexual were common features of people of color. They had bare lips, they had curvier features, and they had almond eyes because they were meant to add to the ambiguity of the race of the characters. So just to sprinkle a racism in there too to add on to the, to the absolute misogyny and slut shaming. It's literally just a doll. I think, um, I think people were really, really crazy about it. It's a doll, you guys. It's a doll. It's not meant to look like a real human. It has weird disproportionate features. It's a doll. It's a toy. If you want to hear more about the like super wild things that people said about the Bratz, definitely check out Darling Doll's video, Bratz Hate Was Truly Unhinged. It's a really good video. I am a big Darling Dolls fan. They're probably um, my biggest influence as to becoming a doll YouTuber because I saw them doing it and I'm like, oh my God, I can just go on here and talk about my favorite thing in the world and just post it and that's it. So that's beside the point, but definitely go check out their channel. I love them. After being absent for a very short time, Bratz returned with their 10th anniversary party collection after a reopening and subsequently winning the case against Mattel. The fashions for these new dolls that came out were very 2010. They also added 10 new characters to the Bratz pack. Adri, Ashby, Carrie, Joelle, Leora, Liliana, Lydia, Shady, Shira, and Tyla. A lot. The Bratz Rock web series premiered to poor reception and was canceled shortly after. Well, it was put on hiatus and then canceled, but either way. Reception to the new dolls was very mixed because the hair quality was still really awful and they only came with one outfit. Plus the fashions are interesting. <laughs> the next year they introduced a whopping 23 characters. That's too many, that's too many. In 2012, coincidentally, right around the time that Monster High was getting popular, Bratz released Bratzilla's House of Witches. These were a spin-off featuring characters, the characters witchy cousins. The dolls had inset eyes and saran hair and were really well received. They are so pretty. I really want to add these ones to my collection. I feel like they were almost like, the inset eyes were like almost a test and they remind me of the Rainbow High dolls that we have now with the beautiful eyes. These dolls are so pretty. Bratz also released the True Hope collection for cancer awareness and donated the proceeds to City of Hope. I like these dolls. They're really cute. I love the, um, I love the idea behind them and I think they're really cute dolls. And I'm gonna say it, they can't be hindered by the bad hair quality because there's no hair. All right, in 2013, Bratz went through a huge rebranding. The dolls got, t the dolls. The dolls got taller, had new packaging, a new logo, and a new slogan, Unleash Your Passion, which is nowhere near as good as the girls with a passion for fashion. This was not well received, and MGA ended up putting the brand on hiatus. These really were the awkward middle teen years for brats. These years were not going very well for them. Things, ah, my cat just bit me. Things were not going great. Let's continue. Chapter five, another comeback, 2015 to 2016. The Bratz were back, 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 back again, but this time with a very different look. New heads, new bodies, new shoe molds, and most notably to me, 
new face screenings. The screenings were a lot more simplistic and childlike, and despite having returned to the high quality clothing, the brats could not seem to regain their popularity. It was clear they had taken the criticisms of the past generations into account for better or for worse. The girls looked more youthful and lost their edge. Literally, no edge anymore, none. Oh my God, I'm so sorry for the lighting, you guys. <laughs> the lines were also very heavily focused on selfie culture with a lot of emojis and cell phones and selfies and it was a lot. They had lines titled hashtag BFFL selfie snaps and selfie stick, uh, which came with an actual legitimate selfie stick. And they premiered a new web series, which was not very successful. After only a year, the unsuccessful second generation of brats quietly disappeared from the shelves, as they should. <laughs> so where are we now? After relative silence from the Bratz brand, they returned for their 18th anniversary in 2018 with a collector line aimed at ad adults designed by artist Hayden Williams. These dolls are really beautiful and they go back to the classic edgy look with the sultry eyes and everything much better than what they'd been doing. The Bratz also made their social media come back in 2020 and collaborated with fashion brands Dolls Kill and Pretty Little Thing, as well as a few more. And they released the game Total Fashion Makeover for App Store, a game I've heard is amazing, but have never been able to play because it was not available in Canada. And I'm really disappointed with that. <laughs> I'm really disappointed in that. The Dolls made their official return in 2021 starting with reproductions aimed at older audiences. The original fans, like me. That include the 20 years special editions of the original Cool Bratz and the Bratz Rock Angels 20th anniversary dolls. Last year, Bratz partnered with Jimmy Paul for Pride Month and released the Nevra and Roxy Pride Pack, officially confirming that the two are a couple. Ah, this is my current desperate ISO. It has been for I don't know, a while. Like, since I started doll collecting, probably. I want this set so bad. I love them so much. They're so beautiful. Their giant rainbow coats and their boa is so pretty. And I I just love it. Also collaborated with the brands Maula Lola. I have such a hard time saying that every time. And Cult Gaia. And released some more designer dolls, which are really pretty, but out of my price range. We also saw the release of the first mini brats, which I only have two of, but I will show off. I have a Chloe styling head and a girl's night out jade, tiny one. So I do like those. In this year, 2023, we have gotten some pretty cool releases in my opinion. We got a pack of the Tweevils from the show, which is like, finally, Kirsty and Casey are dolls. Very exciting. They should really do um, uh, Bernadine, I think that's her name, from the show. They should really do her too. Uh, we also got the Pretty and Punk reproductions. I've shown my jade already, but I will happily show her again. I really want the rest of these, except maybe the boy doll. I don't really care for boy dolls, if I'm being honest. I don't think I have a single boy doll on here. No, I don't. I don't like boy dolls. I like girl dolls. Sorry. <laughs> Kylie Jenner also recently joined the Bratz Pack with a special release. I'm not personally a huge Kylie Jenner fan, but I do think the dolls are cute. And I found this really interesting clip from an article from 2016 that I think is really interesting in context. This is from Meet the Designers Behind the Controversial Bratz Dolls. We love Kylie Jenner. I'm at the headquarters of the toy company MGA Entertainment and a male Bratz designer whose name MGA publicists would not tell us on record citing undisclosed legal reasons is gushing about Kylie Jenner. Since they first debuted in 2001, the ethnically ambiguous dolls, as a company representative called them, have become famous for their streetwear style, huge heads, and pouty mouths. Listicle writers regularly call Kylie a Bratz doll thanks to her trademark big lips and pack sun chic style, and the designer takes this as a compliment. Really interesting. Clearly they've been into Kylie Jenner for a while, so it's just something that's been in the works. Her line has two standard 10 and a half inch dolls, or 11 and a half inch dolls, not sure. Can't remember right now, sorry. Day Kylie and Night Kylie, and then she's got a 24 inch version. Massive, who needs a 24 inch Kylie Bratz doll, sorry. And her own line of mini Bratz, she got a lot. 
Now, the next things we're seeing right now are actually two packs of the 20 Years dolls with Yasmin and Jade and Sasha and Chloe. I didn't actually have the opportunity to get these dolls, so if I can find the two packs, I will be purchasing them. We are also going to be getting Mini Brat Series 2. A lot of people are already finding them in stores. I have not, but last but not least, we should be seeing Always Brats pretty quick here to go with the new series that airs as TikToks. Some people have been finding listing names, but no pictures yet, so we'll see. That brings us right up to where we are now, today, in November of 2023. Now the Brats continue to focus on reproductions as their popularity has skyrocketed once again. Secondhand prices are astronomical, and merch can be found anywhere from Hot Topic to Walmart. MGA is continuing to come out with reproductions that are hopefully going to help to offset the price of some of the original vintage dolls. I personally am really excited to see where MGA takes the Bratz in the future, but I am also pretty skeptical and nervous, as a lot of other fans are. At some point or another, Carter Bryant left the Bratz team for reasons I could not personally find. Let me know if you know the reasons, because I've been digging. I couldn't even find a year, but I think it's pretty safe to say that it was probably around 2011 when they kind of lost their, lost their way a little bit. So I'm really excited to see what happens next, but I will not be surprised if things aren't living up to his standards because as the creator, I really wish he still had the creativity over it. You know, like he, he's got a special place in my heart. He affected my life a lot. I think it's safe to say that the Bratz have influenced an entire generation of children and toy makers. The innovation of the Bratz that led them to be Barbie's first real competitor forced the industry to change and grow for the better. They were groundbreaking in terms of their diversity, attitude, and their fashion-forward approach. Although they were definitely hated as much as they were loved, their legacy can be seen in the doll and toy industry and in the now adults like myself who grew up with the dolls and still see them so fondly. Bratz personally taught me that I could express myself any way that I wanted. I could be smart and I could be cool and I could be fashionable all at, one, fashionable all at once and I could express myself through the way I look, no matter how I wanted to do it. Let me know how you feel Bratz has affected the toy industry or you personally, if you have any opinions on this. I know that the Bratz were flawed in a lot of ways, but their individuality and uniqueness left a lasting impression on at least one generation. I would really love to hear your guys' opinions on the Bratz. You know, tell me if you love them as much as I do, and let me know what I missed in this video. I know I would have missed lots of things because I've been doing the scripting and research for a while and I looked at the page for so long, I am so certain there are things that I just completely forgot. So please, 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 if you have anything really, please tell me in the comments. If you know I got something wrong, tell me in the comments or if you feel like I missed something, just let me know because I just, I wanna know it all, I do. Okay, that's gonna be the end of the video. If you made it this far, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. I know this is probably gonna be a pretty long one, but I hope it was at least as fun to watch as it was fun to make because I I just, I really loved researching this for this video. I loved writing the script. I loved filming it. I had so much fun with this one and I'm hoping to come back with more videos like this more often. I, if people are like this video, then maybe I could do one about Barbie or I could do one about um, like the LOL dolls or you know there's so many different brands out there I think it'd be fun to do one on strawberry shortcake as well because I love strawberry shortcake but we'll see I also really would like to do a video about the Bratz media in the future the shows and the um, I mean the show and the movies so if that's something that would be interesting to you please do let me know so that I know that there's interest okay okay thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate each and every one of you when I started this channel, I thought nobody would watch me except my boyfriend, and now I have like a hundred and something subs, and people are watching me, so thank you so much. You guys are so awesome, and yeah, have a wonderful day.